Right, so in the previous session, we have seen how to download and install Postman tool, and we have explored some basic options. And today we are going to see how we can actually test APIs uh, in Postman. So how we can add validation points for the request. So what are the different type of requests we can send, and uh, then we will see some examples. So here I have some list of uh, API requests. So here, uh, some of them are get requests, some of them are post, and some of them are delete request so basically if you just go for a rest api testing we have we always do only four operations or one is get operation and then we say post and put and delete so these are the four most important operations we do most of the times get post put delete so when you use get request it will get you the data from the server so whatever request you are doing you will get some response from the server and post is nothing but it will go and create a new resource in the server suppose if you want to create a new record or some new page or new something new which is in the server so in that case we need to send a post request but when you send a post request we need to also pass request body this is most important so whenever you send the post request you need to pass request body so here we can also call as a request payload this is actual term so on the API testing, we are calling as a payload, request body or request payload. So what is this request body payload means? So when I create a post request, we need to specify what kind of a record or what kind of page you are going to create in the server, right? Suppose in the database, if you want to create a new record in the table, we will pass some data, let like insert uh, into table, some table data, uh, user data we will pass. Similarly, when you do the post request, we are also going to send some data along with the post request. And get request, we don't need to pass anything, just a URL is enough. But when you send a post request, you need to pass request body or request payload. And similarly, when you do post request or put request also, put is nothing but just update. So whatever record is already there and whatever record we already created by using post request, if you want to update that record, we use a post uh, put request. And uh, the put is also required, request payload, same thing. Because here we need to say exactly what we need to update in the existing record. And uh, deleting request, we can just uh, pass a URL and that will delete the record. So these are the four more operations. We can call them as a HTTP request. So these are all called HTTP requests, four operations, okay? Especially post and put request, we need request body or request payload. And every request will get some response. And that response will be there in the JSON format. So every request will get you response in JSON format. And uh, sometimes it will be HTML also, HTML, and sometimes it will be XML, and sometimes it will be text, etc. So multiple uh, formats uh, will be supported by REST API. But in SOAP, it is not supported. SOAP only supports only XML format. Okay, so this is a basic understanding. So now we'll see how we can send these type of requests, how we'll get the responses and what kind of things we can verify on the response. So before doing all these things, we need to do some groundwork on this. We need to understand what are the different APIs are in the application and what, the, what are the requests we have to send, what is the response we will get, what are the things we need to validate on the response. All these things you need to uh, complete uh, at uh, the time of your preparation time. So you will, uh, developers will provide all this information to you. At the time of developing the APIs, they make some documentation on these APIs. So the same document will be provided to you and by reading the document, you need to understand what are the different uh, APIs and uh, what is the body you have to pass and what is the success response and failure responses, status codes. Okay, so along with the comments and validations. Validations we have to write and rest of them will be provided by the developers, okay? And each uh, test case, we need to write validation points. So these are the, some, the, some of the validation points I have written, and we will see that, how we can validate the responses. So this is a sample document I have, and which contains uh, almost 10 APIs, and first to five are related to one application, and six to 10 uh, belongs to some other application, okay? Now we'll see one by one, using Postman, how we can test these APIs. Now let's go to Postman tool. And here I don't have any collection. Yesterday I created one collection, I removed it. So let me just create a new collection. 
and if you just open the postman you will see the collection tab here and you can create a new collection by using this option or you can just go to file new or you can directly click on this new collection and here collection name collection name so here i'm saying demo apis click on create now it is created new collection demo apis now i'm going to do one by one so the first one is this one so this is get request and let me just copy this so we need to read the comment also the comment is important because what exactly this uh, api is performing or doing it will represent here so if you just read this uh, url request uh, res.in api slash users colon a question mark page equal to two so first of all we need to understand this complete url so what comment says two representing page number and query parameter equal to page equal to two so after question mark whatever is it that is called query parameter and here two representing the page number so when i send this request it will display the response and from the server from page number two how many users we have so that information will be displayed so when you send this request in the browser so from the browser you can just send only get request okay browser we cannot use browser to edit the apis just for sending the get request we can use browser so when i send this request through browser so this will give you some information so in the page number 2 uh, total 12 users are there so how many users we have so all the users information we got it so email id first name last name avatar so these all the information we got it from the page number 2 so similar if i just say page number 3 you got page number 3 data okay so this is a simple api now once you send this request we need to validate the response and we can validate a lot of things in the response now we'll see that so let me just copy this uri and then this is a get request go to postman and we need to create a new request here so to create a new request just click on the plus tab this will create a new request and here these are the different type of request available so select the get request and here paste your url Okay, so as soon as you pasted your URL, so this particular part is already added under query parameters. You can see page equal to two. And if you made change here, it will automatically change here. If you do change here, suppose when I say three here, that will be changed here. Okay, so this is my get request and this is my URL. And because this is a get request, we don't need to pass uh, any response, any body. So just we need to send the request. We, when you click on the send, so this will give you the response. So this is a response in JSON format and you can clearly see the format also. Page number two, and these are the, this is the actual data. This is a user data one, user data two, and three and four, so on. So there are multiple data sets we have. So once you get the response, so there are certain things which we need to mainly focus on. So once you get the response, first to mainly focus on, we need to focus on the body, response body, so that we have to validate something in this. Second thing is, as soon as we send the request, we will get a status code here. And 200 is, uh, there are certain number of status code we have. We can call them as a HTTP status codes. And there are so many status codes we have. 200 is a 200 and two, 201, 201. So these two are the successful status codes. So when you get 200 or 201, then your request will be successful. And other than these two codes, if you get any other codes, your request is not processed properly because of some reasons. So if your request is successfully done means you will get the status code either 200 or 201. And uh, we can also uh, see some time, how much time it is taken and how much data we got. So the data size. So we got some information here. And along with this, every response, we will have some headers. If I just go to headers part here, every response we got some header data like a date content type transfer coding connection and these are all server related information we don't need to understand uh, all these things but we need to check proper headers are created or not and proper headers are coming along with the response or not we need to verify and even cookies also there so sometimes you will have multiple cookies or single cookie will be created so we can check this so these are the important portions which we need to focus on while validating the APIs, the body part. So response body, we have to validate. Second thing is cookies, headers, and then test results. So once we added validation points, we will also get the test result here.
so far i just send a request i haven't added any validation points so that i don't get any result here and then status time and so on so these are the very very important items which we need to verify once you send a request okay so now i have sent my first request and uh, as per the success response returns all the list of users in page number two and only thing is we need to add some validation points so i got successful response 200 okay but i need to put some validation points on this so here i'm doing manual checking right so if i just cookies i can see cookies i can see headers here i can see status code this is just a manual part and manually i'm just observing uh, am i getting correct uh, data or not but i'm just going to add some validation points and if those validation points are passed then my request is passed so how we can add validation points so that i'm going to show you now so once you send a request we got some data and here you can find one more tab called test so here also you can see some of the tags like authorization headers body prerequisite steps tests and settings so here basically first tab is a parameters in this particular url how many parameters are there it will list out here so page equal to two this is one parameter pass parameter or query parameter so that is comes here and authorization sometimes when you send a request which is uh, required some authorization so it will be like a login authentication it can be some token or something like this some apis are completely restricted so in those cases you need to pass some kind of authorization and the next one is headers so headers are eight which is already created and body and prerequisites pre-request skip so here also we can add some prerequisites before sending the request what we have to do so that information we can pass here under test tab we need to add validations okay so this is most important now for this request so for this request i'm going to add some validation points now just go to prerequisite uh, go to test tab and here i'm going to add so what are the validation points i'm going to add here is let me just show you i'll tell you something here just hold on So first one is we can validate a lot of things. So here the first two thing is this is a validation of status code. So this is status code 200. Okay, right? So here test is a just a keyword and here this is a just a description. Right? We can also put test case ID also here. Okay, test case just ID. So here just a validating status code and this is a simple description. You can just modify equal to and this is actual validation point. So response code dot code equal to double equal to should be there because we are comparing here. So response code dot code equal to 200. So this will compare after getting the response. It will compare our response code 200 is equal to 200 or not. And if both are equal, then only this will pass. Otherwise fail. And the second, uh, suppose inside this body, I want to verify something is present or not. Suppose here page equal to two. Okay. So or else something or email is this one so I'm, i just want to verify this email is present here or not so i can just pass email like this so response body dot has and whatever value you want to verify which is present in this json response you can pass that value okay this is one validation point and the same validation point and if you just check it here uh, this value is present in the whole response or not it will verify the whole json response and wherever it is this will pass but I want to verify this in specific area. For example, so here page equal to two is there. So just say if I put only two here, observe this. If I just put only two here, I am removing this. So I'm just put only two here. So response body contains a two here. So not only here, here also there and multiple places it is there, right? So if I say response body has two, this will verify two is present in the whole JSON response or not. If the somewhere it is going to, if somewhere it found, that means this uh, step is passed. But suppose I want to verify exactly these two present here, page, page column two. So exactly I want to verify page number is two. So in that case, we cannot use this. Okay, so this will just check whether this particular data available in your JSON response or not. So wherever it is, doesn't matter. So whether that particular data is present in the response body or not. But if you still want to write specifically 
like I want to check the page number is two, then you have to write some piece of code. So this is basically JavaScript code and Postman internally support JavaScript. So here, what I have done is I just created one variable in JavaScript. If I want to create a variable, we use where keyword. So where response equal to JSON dot parse. This is a command JSON dot parse response body. So this command will parse the response body, the whole JSON format, store that into response variable. And in this response, I'm going to validate page. So response dot page equal to two. So in this response, the page value I'm expecting should be two. Similarly, you can also validate other stuff. So you can just say response dot total equal to 12 response dot total page is equal to two. Okay. So similarly, you can validate all other things. So either we have to go for this one or with go for this one. So the second one is always better thing because when I use second one, it will just check this value is present in the JSON or not in the JSON response or not. So, but uh, we, we, can, we cannot assume like this is exactly displayed here. Even this value is present in somewhere else, our test will pass. But if you want to verify this value exactly placed in the same place, then we have to first capture the response body into some variable. And in that variable dot page equal to two. So this will, this is actual validation. So test page number, this is actual value page number. So whatever want, whatever thing we are going to val validate that we need to specify here. So page number. So I think here, do we have a page number? Uh, no problem. So this is a user defined text and this is actual thing. So response dot page. So here this page is a keyword. So this one. And if you want to add it page underscore, like if you want to add it total here, we have to change the response dot total. And it can, this is just a description. So whatever double quotations I have included, that is just a description of your test. You can write anything on that, but this is actual validation point. Okay. So in Postman, we have to add n number of validations like this. This is one point, one validation point is second validation point and third validation. Point. So the first validation point we will check the status code is 200 or not. Second validation point will check the two is present inside the body or not. So what I can do is uh, instead of verifying two, I can just check something else. Uh, I'll say data. Okay. So I can just put some data. This is present or not. I can verify because we have only one data in the whole response, one data node, and this is one validation point. And this is all these two steps comes under one validation point. So this particular statement will get the whole JSON response into this variable and that variable dot page equal to two I'm saying. So this is a validation board, three verification points I put here. So rest of the verify verification point we'll see for different request. So for now, I'm how many added? Three I have added. Even one is, one is failed, the whole test will fail. So even one validation got failed, the whole test will fail. So now I have added all that validations on the test tab. Now we can save it. And once you save, it will give you request name and we have to store under collection. So I'm just giving something called, okay. So here uh, I will directly give the name. So what this API is doing, it is displaying data uh, in the page number two. So I'm just directly giving that name phase two, phase two user data. Okay. So this is a name I have given for the request and just say select a collection and then save to demo APIs. So now under this demo APIs, one request we have said, this is itself is a test case. Okay. One request we will consider as one test case. So once we added validation point, we have save it. And now again, click on send. So this will go ahead execute and we got the same response and now we can see under test results we got status so how many are passed how many are skipped how many are failed we got it and if i just go to the test and now i'll modify this suppose i'm expecting something called response page equal to two is there i'll say five i'm expecting now i can just send here so now you can see the last one is got failed first two validation points are passed the last one is failed Right. So this is how we can add validations on the response. Now we'll see a few more requests. So go to Excel and now let's see the second one. So what the second one will do is, and first one after question mark, 
3 is equal to 2 is displayed. And the second request, we have just only path parameter. We don't have a query parameter. So what is difference between path parameter and query parameter? Query parameter will filter the data. And whereas path parameter will get the data from the server based on the path we specified. Here you can say users slash 2 is there. Here users a question mark page equal to 2 is there. There is a lot of difference. Now the second one is also get request. And what it will do, it returns a single user. The first request returns all the users which are present in the second page. Now the second request will send you single user and based upon the ID. So here two is an ID here. And uh, two is representing the student ID or user ID and slash two is a path parameter. And here I have added two validation points. So when I send two here, you will get one user, single user. So that user is having some first name and last name. I will verify that. So now I'm sending this request, copy this. Go back to the postman and here I'm just creating plus tab and say, and uh, get request. And as soon as I added get request, click on the send. So now we got data. So you can say ID equal to two. So we have sent two here. We got ID equal to two. So when I say three here, now we got the data three here. So basically this request will give you single user data. So now we need to add some validation points. So this is the very, this is the response body. So here I just want to validate first name and last name is exactly the same thing or not. So for that, I'm going to add validation points. So first name and last name, I'm going to verify. So go to the test. And here I need to validate. So these are the two first name and last name. So to verify that we can add validation points like this. Okay. So this is a validation point. See this validating response body is a just a description equal to response dot body has J name. So is a first name and the last name response body dot has. So this is not a recommended guys. Okay. Because this will verify just this keyword is or this statement or the word is present in the response or not but it will not verify exactly in the same place so here this is actually first name right it should display exactly here itself and the last name should be exactly displayed here but uh, if i put this validation point this data if i display anywhere else other than here it will display anywhere else it's still the validation point will pass but that is not our expected so we are expecting here the first name value should be displayed here and last name value also displayed here. It should not display any other places. But uh, this validation point will pass even though these uh, values are displayed in anywhere in the JSON. So this basically this particular validation point will verify this data is present in the JSON response or not. But exactly position it will not verify. So it is not recommended. So instead we can just write our JavaScript. So to write the JavaScript validation point, we have to use this one. So this is always preferable guys. So take this variable called response, JSON dot parse response body, the parse the entire response body into variable. Now here I can verify. So what I'm verifying first name verification. So here change the description. I'll say verify first name and response dot first name, first underscore name. And what I'm expecting here is, in the double quotations you can put this one so this is the first time i'm expecting and same thing from the same response i'm adding one more point one more validation point so once you get the response into this variable you can use this response multiple times so here verify uh, last name and response dot response dot last underscore name and last name is waiver so this is the last name so now this will exactly verify first name is this one and last name is this one. So this is always recommended. Okay, so you can, these two are optional. You can just remove them also. Fine, so now let us run this. So click on the send. So now go to the test results. Now it is getting failed some reason. So why it is getting failed? Assertion error, expected false to be, to the, um, let's see the response, what we are getting. Okay, so response dot first underscore name, last underscore name. I think double quotations are not required here. Uh, 
okay let's run this something went wrong while running your script check postman console for more info okay first of all let us save this save and this is single user request get request under demo APS I'm saving it okay so now let's cross check why it is uh, getting failed uh, I got the response here and response dot first name okay uh, under data we have a first name I think so response dot data dot first name let us try this no still it is failed Okay, so let's uh, open console window. Show Postman console. So here you can see the log messages, why it is getting failed. Okay, so you can see here, why it is error is giving, JNet is not defined. He's saying that one JNet is not defined. Okay, so why it is not, request is successful, but it is not able to validate the first name and last name. So JNet is not defined, it is saying. Okay, so what we will do is, okay, so we need to write a proper uh, JSON path. So this is the data, inside this, we have a first name, here, last name. So I have given uh, data slash first name, data dot last name. So to verify this JSON path rightly or not, whether it's correct or not, so I'll show you some tip. And this is also very, very important. Sometimes you will see some complex JSONs. In that case, you cannot directly locate the node. Okay, so we have to write a JSON path. If it is an XML, we need to write XPath. Similarly, in the JSON, we have to write the JSON path. So for that, I'll just give you one tip. So we have a small uh, extension we have for the Chrome browser. So that is called JSON path finder. So this is the one. And you can also search for it. JSON path finder, Chrome extension. So you need to just add this to your Chrome browser and which is very, very helpful. And when you're working with the complex JSON, because if you have a JSON format is very complex, it is very difficult to uh, locate that particular node and value. Fine. So just add this. And once you added this, you will get one small question mark like this, JSON Pathfinder. Click on this, then it will open a small window. So here we have to paste our JSON. So let me just, uh, copy this JSON and paste it over here, right? So now what I want to do is I want to get this value. So what is the node here? First name, I'm just passing here. Just click on the submit, select the JSON path, click on the submit. So when I pass this, it will give you result is like this, okay? So I'm just copying this path. Now go to the test and uh, here response dot data dot first name this I have given correctly response dot data dot first name equal to we have to put double quotation also I guess so here this is the data we got so this we have to use so here double equal to remove this and this one like this and uh, similarly uh, copy this uh, last name and submit so this is the last name so this is also have given correctly slash dot data but response should be there response dot data dot last name and the value is written is this one we were this is the value which is written okay so now let us see how it is going to work okay so now we can see it is getting passed go to test results i think i have given some spaces here so now verify first name is got passed verify last name is also got passed so this is a one more important tip, which is very, very useful. Sometimes if your response is very complex, you don't need, uh, you cannot write the complete, uh, you cannot uh, notice exactly where the data is present. So to simplify this, we can use this JSON Pathfinder. So whichever data you want to retrieve from this JSON format, you can just specify that node name here and accordingly it will give you the data. So this one, this path you can use to get this value. So this is how we need to add validation points uh, for the request. So once it is saved, 
now i'll go to one more request go to the excel now let's take the third one so this is a post request so what it is going to do is and if i pass this body so as i tell you as i told you beginning so when i send the post request we have to pass request body or request payload and this is also in the json format okay so it will go and create a new record in the database so now by using this post request we can create a new record but what is the record we have to create we have to pass some data so name and job so when i pass this request we need to send this data also along with this request then it will create a new record and we will get response like this in the response we will get the name job and along with these two data uh, these two fields we will get some additional fields also and id and created at so these two fields will be additionally created by the server with the timestamp but when i passing the data i'll pass only name and job and once it is created our server will give you some response in that response we need to validate name job and id and created at is a dynamic values so server will be created okay so whatever data we are sending with the same data record is created or not we have to verify so this is a post record and uh, status code should be 201 and here it is basically creation so after creation we can verify something so in the body we have this name and job is there or not and response code 201 or not we can verify okay so now let us see how we can verify this okay so let me copy this url this is our post request so now click on the tab select the post and specify this but where exactly we have to specify the payload so this we have to specify this is a json format so here we need to go to the body section in the body section there are different formats we have none format data and raw binary and so on so let's take a raw data raw checkbox Oh, sorry not raw so text okay so select the raw and here as soon as you selected this check box or radio button you can see it is enabled here text javascript json html and xml so rest api will support these formats so we have to take one of those format let us take json format currently we are passing and then paste it over here so this is a request payload and whatever we can see in the response that is called as a response payload and uh, request payload will be there only for post and put request so request payload will be there only for post and put request and whatever response we got here we can call it as a response payload so there are two kinds of payloads one is request payload which we can send along with the request the second one is response payload we will get the response payload for every kind of request fine so now i am sending this request and as soon as i say send this will go and create a new new record in the database and in the response we will get the name job along with the id and creation date so let's click on send so now we got the data something like this see this name job id and id dynamically added to this user and created at so timestamp is also given so this is a response so in this response again we have a 201 is created this is a status code and we got some headers and we will see how to validate headers and cookies and all these things so first we will see very basic stuff so basic validations and then we will discuss about rest of the validations and uh, we haven't added any validation points so test results are empty right so now let me add some validation point so same record every time i cannot create we need to always modify this data okay so first of all let me add okay so let me just go to the test and i'm adding some validation points so i'm just getting the response body into this variable i'm checking the name is equal to this one job is equal to this one and then status code also 201 should be there okay so now let us uh, run this again one more time so again it is created so new name job and id created at and if i just go to the test results 
all three got passed. So here we verify the name, here we verify the job, and here we verify the status code. Okay, so this is how we need if there are any past or skipped or failure, which will come here in these tabs. So this is a post query. It will go and create a new record in the database. And here we have to send the body. So that's very, very important. Under body, we have to pass this uh, request body. And here we got the response body. Fine. So this is a one type of request. Post request. Let me save it. And this is create user post request under demo APIs. I'm saving it. Okay, so far we have seen three requests. Now let's move on to the another one. This one. So this is also post request. And uh, what this basically will do is it will check the authentication part, it will not create any record. There are two kinds of post requests we have guys. One is it is going to create a new record in the database. The second post request is it is going to validate some data is present in the database or not. So let me just give you a small example. So there are two kinds of post requests. Sometimes when you do login process, right? So suppose I have some login screen in my application. So here my login screen. And here server is there, application server. So in the server, your login data will be stored. So here already you have a login information, your username and password, it is already there. So whenever you're trying to log in into your application, your username and password will, will be taken by some API. Okay, internally, the API, internally, as I said, uh, presentation layer, business logic layer, and database layer, right? Same thing. So on the UI side, when you pass your username and password, existing username and existing password, the API will get the data and this particular data will be sent to the server and server side, it will be validated whether the username and password is valid or not. If it is a valid, then it will token, it will send some password token and then API will allow you to log in into the application. But here in this context, we are sending the post request but we are not validating anything. Why I'm saying post request because we are passing the data also along with the request. So this is a one kind of post request. It will hit the API, API will get the data and validate at the server side. It will server will give you some token. If the data is valid, it will send you one token. If the data is invalid, it will send you another token. And based upon the token, API will decide whether it should allow the user or not. And this is also done through API. There is one more type of post request we have here. We are going to send some data and we'll say some post or submit it with the API will receive the data and directly create the record in the database here. It will create. Okay. So this is a one type of post request. So whatever I'm going to show you now is this type of request. Okay. First one. So now we'll see that. So here, this is the email and password I'm sending directly through an API. So normally we send through UI and here we are doing API testing. So I'm directly sending this data to the API and API will give you some response. If this data is a valid, then API will send you some token for us. Okay. And if the token is successfully sent, that means login is successful. If there is any error, if the token is not sending means the user is not authenticated user. So login will not be successful. So now we'll check the, how this API is going to work. So this is a post request again, copy this, create a new request. This is a post request, post request in the sense we have to pass the body. So just go to body, select the raw and we are sending JSON format. So select the JSON and here, this is a user data I'm passing. Email and password. And if this email and password is already there in the database, then I will get successful token, right? So now let's go to the, I'm adding test later. First of all, let us check this. Let's click on the send. So now I got some error, error user not found. That means this user is not available in the database. So this is a negative case. If this user is not available in the database, we will not get any token here. 
Okay, so this is a negative testing. If I pass invalid user and invalid password, you will get the user not found. That is another uh, request actually. You can just say here, same request I'm passing and error missing password, missing username. If I miss something, it will give you. But currently this user is not valid. So I'll try to provide some valid user. So what I can do is I'll just go to this uh, API documentation request and uh, request and response sorry just a moment so there is a documentation is also available and if you just go to this website i have taken all the apis from this website you can see different type of request we have so whatever i'm trying here is it is login i think yeah, this is the one post request okay so this is the one i need to send this is the body i have to send then you will get the token like this this is just documentation guys okay so now i'm passing this valid data so this data is valid now so when i send this request now you can see token is generated so token generated in the sense it is successful you got 200 is okay okay so the token will be generated randomly so this we cannot predict this value so we cannot apply anything on this but only thing is we can check whether the token keyword is available in the response or not okay so for that what you can do is we can simply say uh, body in the response body token is present or not so for that i can write this one so in that to go to the test i can say test dot here i can say token check response dot uh, response dot name not name so response dot has so this is the one we have to use so here validating token presence validating token presence and response body has this particular keyword i'm verifying otherwise uh, it will give you invalid data right so this token should be there in the response this is my validation point and then say okay send and now it is created token and my test is also passed okay this is how we can check the login is successful or not so actually this type of APIs will be triggered internally when you perform the login process for any application and your api will get the your username and password and it will send the same to the server get the token if the token is valid token is generated then the user is allowed if the token is not generated or invalid token user not allowed and now what I will do is uh, in the post request, I'm sending the post request right in the body. I'm passing some invalid email address. I'm just passing some in invalid email. Now send the request. See this, my validation point is passed. If I see the body, user not found. It is an error it is giving. And uh, 400 is a bad request. So this we can use a negative uh, negative testing. When I pass something uh, invalid, we will get the 400 bad request is a status code and uh, we got user not found. So if I pass valid data, then we will get the token. So this is a valid data. Here we have to pass. When you send this request, then you will get the token. And this token value we cannot validate because this will randomly generated by the application or server so every time you will get the new token so what can we verify here is we can verify the status code you can verify the token is present or not in the test results so this is a another type of post request and the last one is a negative one so this will just be pass only email address it is saying error missing password or something like this or let me try this also and i will save it first this one is login post request save it into demo ips now i'll make another copy of this if you want to another copy just click on here duplicate click on the duplicate it will take another copy and here uh, i will do negative testing so i'll pass some invalid password say some excess excess and so now send this request will see still token is generated something wrong with the api okay so okay save it i haven't saved it okay save it and click on send still token is generated 
Okay, so we'll see. Email, okay. So no problem. So the API is like this, and API is behaving like this. If I pass invalid password, it's not uh, allow us, but this is just a demo API, but still it is allowing us. So what I can do is I can just uh, specify this valid data only, but I'll miss the password. Okay, so now I don't want to provide the password. I just say only email. In that case, you just remove the comma. So in the normally in the UI also, if you miss any username and password, it will clearly say that. And similarly here also, we need to get the same response. When I send this request, you will see missing password. And the same error will be displayed on the UI. Whenever you pass some invalid username and password on the UI, you will get some message, error message. So that error message is basically given by the API. Internally, API will take care of all these things. So this is a negative testing. So I'm also going to save this. Click on the save. So it is already saved with the different name. So I can just save as. I'll give some different name. So login post request. This is a negative test. So it is a negative test. Save it. So we have sent different type of request, get and post request. And similarly, we also have a different type of request here. And these are all the different type of requests. So let me also show you this quickly. And this is uh, basically employee related. So dummy REST API example. So I will also show you the document for this. REST API employees dummy. Okay, so this one. So this is a sample API they have given to practice. See this, this is the root and uh, request type, JSON, and these are the URLs. And when I send this URL, which will give you, get you all employees data. When I send this in a request, it will get you single employee data. This request is a post request, which will create a new record in the database. This will update existing record in the database, and this will delete the existing record in the database. So totally five different type of requests we have. So here everything is covered. Get, post, put, and delete. Right, so now let us try this. So validation points you guys can try later but I will show you how we can send this request. So let us try one by one. So the first one is, let's say get all employees data. I'm taking this URL and uh, the same thing I put it here, okay? And then go to the postman directly. So let me just create another collection. So click on the new collection, employee APIs. So under this collection, I'm going to create a new. So this is a get request and send. So once you send directly, so we'll get the employee, all employees data you got. So every employee is having ID, employee name, salary, employee age, and profile image. Everything you will have. Suppose here I want to verify something guys. I want to verify uh, every record is having, data is having ID, one, two, employee name, salary, employee age, right? So I want to verify so whoever is employee ID is, let's say, uh, one or let's say two. And that employee, employee name should be this one. I want, I'm very, very specific here. If the response contains only one node, like employee name like this, you can directly verify that. But with this name, there are multiple nodes are there. There are multiple nodes are there. And in these cases, the complexity is increased. So we need to verify exactly this value or this value I need to verify. So for employee ID two, the name should be, the employee name should be this one. How exactly we need to verify that? So in those cases, we need to use JSON path. We need to write, we need to extract this value directly. And that's the reason I'm saying, if your JSON, JSON response is very complex, the JSON path finder will be very, very useful for you. Okay, JSON path finder, which is very, very useful for you. And now, how to verify this? So wherever the user is ID equal to, the name should be this one, okay? So what I will do is copy this response, paste it over here. So which one you want to validate? Employee ID two, you want to validate. So go to employee ID two. And this one I need to validate, employee name. So I'll just copy this here without quotation. Observe this carefully, how I'm writing then click on the submit then you can see how many nodes are matching so with this because this id this uh, node employee name node is present in here 
here everywhere multiple places so which is basically written all the nodes which are displayed in your response so which one we have to validate we have to validate this one or we have to validate this one because this is employee 2 right getter winters is a employee 2 if i just go above employee 2 this is a value we need to validate so we have to take this one so this is a node we have to take now copy this go back and now i'm adding test so go to the test and here i just say this is a path and uh, how we can extract by specifying this one so we have to write the script right so this is the script we have to write this is a json path so first we need to pass this response into the some variable and here i'm validating so this node we have to specify here so whatever response we got in that response data one dot employee name should be this one i'm expecting so which one i'm expecting this one i'm expecting just go to browser and this we are expecting so that we have to replace here that's it so this is how we need to verify particular value in the response json path is very very important guys especially when you testing your apis when you send this request so now my test case got passed Fine. So this is how we need to add all the validation points. So let me just save it. Employees and here select this uh, employee node and just save it. Not demo APIs. I'm just going to take another collection employee APIs, right? So remove this. You will see here employee APIs. I'm selecting this and click on this. So now it is saved. I have given, I have not given any name. So let me just give in some name, save as, or you can just rename here itself. Rename. And here I'll say, so get all employees. So I'm just giving this name directly. get all employees data. So this is the one. Once you save it, close, you can see. So now let's move on to the next one. So this will go and create a new record. So get a single employee, sorry. So the first one is getting all the employees data. Now the second will give you a specific employee data, so, but we need to pass some ID. So this is slash 700 is there, right? So this is basically ID of the employee. So that we need to pass. This is also get request. So let's capture this URL and what I can do is I can, I already sent the first request, right? Post request, uh, get request. So here it got all the employees data. So now I need to get all the specific employee data, right? So in this case, we need to uh, take some ID. So like uh, 11, 12, 13, whatever. So let's take that ID. So take this one. And we will change the ID later. So copy this, take one more request, click on the tab. And uh, instead of 700 when I send, let's see whether we got, so here, record not found. So with this 700, we don't have any record in the database. So it is not giving any record. So now we need to choose one of them. So here there are some IDs. Let us say I want to get fifth record, specific employee. So here I'm passing five, then send. So this will give you exactly single record. Again, verification is same. We have to add some tests here, then you can verify something, employee name, salary, individual values also you can verify. So you guys can try later how we can add these validation points. I'm just leaving to you how we can add, you guys can try. I'm just saving this, save. And this is single record, employee single record. Get single record. And save it onto employee APIs. Done. Now let's move on to the next one, post request. So which will create a new record in the database. But here we need to pass the request payload. Whenever you send the post request, we need to pass data also along with the request. So this is a URL. So let's take it and uh, save this. Take another request. This is a post request. And uh, go to the body section, raw and uh, json and here we need to pass body so with this data i'm going to create new employee record so name 
So I'll say something, David. Give some unique ID. Suppose if the name is already there in the database, it will give you an error. So David one two three X Y Z. I'm giving some dummy name, salary, age. So once you pass this data along with the post request, it will go ahead and create a new record in the database. And what is the additional information we have? Status code should be two hundred. Fine. So now let us send this. Right. So now we can see successful message, and the data is created. With the name, salary, age, and ID, perfectly fine. And now I want to check whether this data is recorded properly or not. For that, what I can do is go to the first, second request. We already done this, right? Which will give you single employee data. Now here, specify the ID. So whatever record we created, the ID of the record is thirty-eight. So now we can go here. Our previous request here change as a thirty-eight. So when you send this, it will give you exact record. It is not giving. Then there is something wrong. So, thirty-eight is my ID. Let's go back and uh, records doesn't found. Okay, click one second. Okay, so something is not giving. Let me try this one second. It is successful. Uh, when you send the request. It should give actually. If it is not giving, means that's a problem with the API. So these are the different bugs we have to find, guys. So see this. It is clearly saying it is created. We got also data, but when you're trying to search the record with this ID, I'm not getting the data. So that is the biggest error. So we just go here. See this. It is still saying record not found. And uh, okay, let's try with one first one. So it will give you all employees, right? When you send this. This will give you all employees, and here also we should able to see thirty uh, eight is there. See this? This is a record we created, but when you're searching for this, it is not giving, right? So thirty eight is there, but here I'm searching with thirty eight. Sorry, not thirty five. Guess it is a thirty eight. Sorry, uh, I see this thirty eight is also not giving. So that means there is a problem. Okay, so these are the different type of bugs we need to find. When you doing the API testing, so let me also save this. We already, I think this is a, uh, this is a post request, right? Save. I'm giving create, or you can say post new EMP. New EMP record. Under employees APS, I am saving it. Okay, so now let us move on to the next one. So we have seen this one post, and next one put one put. If we record is already existed, we can just update the record. Okay, so first of all, let us find. Uh, let us take one existing record. So let's go to the first request, or let's go to the second request, and thirty eight is already there. Let's send one second. Is saying failed, or let us take thirty-five. It is saying failed, but what are the other records we have? Let us test this. Employees. Okay, these are the records we have, right? So let us say. Okay, so go to the documentation once again. Okay, this is fine. Create okay. So what I can do is I can just uh, take one existing one. So here employee ID is one, two is there. So let's take uh, employee ID ten is there. Ten is not there. So first of all, it is not getting that. So let's see this one ID thirty five once again. So it is a get request only. I am saying thirty five. It should display the thirty-five record. So somehow it is not giving here. Or let us try in the browser. No, it is not giving. Okay, so no problem. So let us take the existing ones. So let us take something called twenty. Twenty is there, right? So twenty. Let us take twenty.
Okay, so now we got the 20 record. So this record is already there in the database. Now I want to update the record. So I want to update, uh, let's say employee age. I want to update employee age and salary. I want to update. So what I can do is, I need to send a put request. First, let us get this. Let me write here. So this is a put request case. So put request, you have to do carefully. So this is a put request. So this is a record I want to update and this is a request. This is a request which is given this response. Now this data is already there in the database. Now in this data, I want to modify employee salary, employee age. I want to update those two fields. So what I should do is, I need to just go to this particular API so that this one and copy this URL, create uh, another tab and this is a put request, select the put and here which record we are going to update, 20th record. So here is a 20th record and now go to the body section, ra, json and here what we are going to update that we have to specify. So for that we need to read some documentation. So here update right if I just click on the details. So if you want to update actually this is a, if you want to update we have to pass this is the payload then you will get the results like this. Okay so just copy this and in the excel also I have given the same format. So in the same format you have to pass. Now go to the postman and we'll copy this. So what is the name we are expecting? So name is same. So name we are not going to change. We are going to change only salary and age. So let it be the name. So I don't want to change the name. So but we need to pass three data or uh, three sets of data exactly the same. So this is the name. Okay, so let it be there. This is a name and uh, salary so what is the previous salary previous salary is this one so now i want to change that so this is a previous salary so now i instead of 2 1 i'll say 3 1 previously the age value is a 35 so now i'm just modifying is a 40. so name we should not change so name is a primary key so the name should be there salary i modified age is also modified for 28 record so before modifying, this is the data. For 20 record, this is the data. Now I'm going to modify this. I'm sending the put request along with the modified data. Now I will send this. So now it is successful and data is updated. Now we can see with the same record, salaries 317500 is modified. Employee age is also modified. So with this put request, we can update existing data. Now I'm saving it. So put request update data. Save it. Fine. So now I have sent four different type of request. Get, post and put. The last one is a delete request. So this will just directly delete the record by specifying the ID. So let's go here. Let's create another one. Select the delete request. So this is the ID of the employee. So now I already created the employee here. Uh, ID 20th record is already there, right? And now I'm going to delete this. So for that, you can say 20. And here 20 record is already there. If I send this request, we got the data here. So you got the data, fine. So now I'm going to delete this one. Same record I'm going to delete. So click on send. So now successfully deleted the record. So now go back and run the previous record with the 20. Click on the send. So now it is failed. Record is not exact. So it is removed. And one more thing. If I record is not present in the database, what is the status code it is giving? 401 unauthorized. That means record is not present. Okay. So this is a delete request. then save it. So I'm not adding validation points for every request. You guys can try them later. So this is how we need to send a request, specify the body, get the response and do some validations on the response by adding tests. So this is how we need to test APIs.
in postman tool there are a few more other important features are there so i will discuss uh, tomorrow so how we can header how we can verify the cookies how we can head how we can verify the header values there are so many things we have still so we'll discuss tomorrow session so you can see here headers we got how we can verify these headers value how we can verify the cookies and suppose i want to run all these uh, requests in one shot currently i'm running the request one one by one right so how we can group them how we can create a suit how we can run uh, at one shot so i'll show you in the next session okay for today what you have to do is i'll share this excel file and uh, practice each and every request and here i have not added any validation point for this so keep this fill option okay i'll send this excel file and uh, whatever validation points i have added for this request you can just put here and keep that excel with you and tomorrow we'll verify that okay so that's all about today's session i'm just stopping here if you have any queries you can ask me now